Welcome back to the next instalment of World Rhino Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Greater One-Horned Rhino, the most common rhino species to currently inhabit Asia. I hope you enjoy. Greater One-Horned Rhinos, or as they are otherwise known by the name of Indian Rhinos, are one of three rhino species that are native to Asia. They come in at sizes of both lengths of 180 to 380 centimetres, with shoulder heights of 143 to 186, and weights of up to 2,200 kilograms, making them the second largest rhinos after the white rhino. They possess one horn instead of two, which like all other rhinos are composed of condensed keratin, which typically come in at 25 centimetres in length. They have an armoured appearance due to possessing skin folds that assist them in fights with other individuals, so that any injuries that are sustained are instead directed to these folds and armoured sides, which can be up to an inch thick. Like other rhinos, they have keen hearing and a sharp sense of smell, being able to easily assess territories of other rhinos, which scent mark using their own dung, with rhinos scratching their hind feet in the dung, and then by walking, transport their own smell around paths thus creating a scent marking trail that is then claimed by the rhino in question. They feed on a wide variety of plants, feeding on grasses, fruits and the branches of trees and shrubs, utilising their prehensile upper lip to do so. They can move quickly when they need to, being able to run over 55 km per hour for short periods, and are also quite nimble, being able to jump or change directions quickly. They are also excellent swimmers, often gathering near waterholes to graze or wallow, often doing so to avoid the debilitating midday heats. Interestingly, instead of using their horns for combat like the black and white rhinos, which they instead use for display and for foraging, they instead utilise their sharp incisors and canine teeth on their lower jaws to inflict damage, which they can use to devastating effect. Males are the primary instigators of fights, with fights between rival males being the most common cause of mortality. Animals are mostly solitary, except for females with calves, although if food is abundant, animals will congregate. They will greet one another by waving or bobbing their heads, nuzzling and even sparring, and playing with twigs in their mouths. Indian rhinos once inhabited many areas ranging across from Pakistan to Myanmar, and even parts of India and China, and aside from the occasional tiger attack, adult rhinos were nearly impervious to any predation. This all changed with human hunting, and were hunted historically for centuries for sport, as agricultural pests and for their horns, which as mentioned in previous videos, was and still was thought to have medicinal benefits, even though that is not the case. By the early 1900s, rhino populations crashed dramatically, with fewer than 200 individuals remaining at one point. Thankfully, with strict protection from the Indian and Nepalese wildlife authorities, Indian rhino numbers have managed to recover, now numbering around 3,600 individuals. They are mostly found within Kazaranga National Park, and although poaching still remains a large threat, the strict and hostile treatment that poachers face in these areas means that the population continues to grow and expand. Two big threats that they still face is habitat destruction and interaction with local communities. As they live in areas with fertile soil, people use the same land for farming purposes, and therefore conflicts have happened, mainly from females with calves that see people as a threat. High population density in some parks has also led to lower breeding rates, and concerns about long-term viability of subpopulations due to a lack of genetic diversity. Encouraging farmers to plant unpalatable species like mint keeps rhinos away from their farmland while also preventing any dangerous interactions, and generating money for the communities and anti-poaching operations. With that, I hope you enjoyed this instalment of World Rhino Week, and that you are now more caught up and invested in the plight these animals face what they are like and what is being done to save them. And if you want to further support rhino conservation, there is a donation link to the International Rhino Foundation page in the description and in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time with the next instalment covering the Sumatran Rhino.